So, we've just seen the final tour of the Bambi Law Signal Box leave uh, today, Sunday the 2nd of October, uh, and we've had over 300 visitors, um, over 100, well, for the last eight weeks, we've welcomed over 3,500, to be exact, 3,508 people into the box, over 179 tours. Of course, that's a phenomenal job, uh, and us as volunteers couldn't do that without many people here. I know there's a few people here that want to say some things. Um, so first of all, is we've got Mark Cockrell over here, who many of you have probably spoken to. So Mark, is anything you'd like to say? Well, I think first of all, if you can repeat that number. 3,508 people in eight weeks. Which, which is amazing. It's phenomenal. And it's thanks down to everybody. It, it has been quite a journey since January, when some of us first got together uh, and started to campaign. Um, and we couldn't have been here at the end of very successful eight weeks. It wasn't for the commitment and dedication of so many people. As you said, some of you are today, thank you for coming along, but there are so many who, who aren't here with us today. Um, really, this is a chance to say a massive thank you to everybody for that uh, for that time. Uh, and everything that they've done has made it such a success. Um, the teamwork, collaboration and networking has been absolutely first class on this project. Uh, and that's allowed us to achieve many things um, throughout this, so it's the original campaign, which I think Mark will agree we did pretty well, but not yeah. quite there. Um, the support that we had throughout that campaign, uh, the support of other signal boxes during that period of time and beyond. Uh, clearly, we've got to thank Network Rail for the opportunity extended to us to have this eight weeks. Uh, those that are promoted via social media and with national and social media, which many have been through the Facebook page. Uh, we've had uh, video filming and editing. Going here. Two railways are already trains all the time. Uh, we've had the production of the souvenir booklets, the tickets, the model. Uh, Chilton Railways have supported us massively through the period with access through the stage and into the box and at many times staff. Um, Network Rail, as we say, for offering such a collaborative working. Uh, Martin, for leaving many of his own items here, risking them for the eight weeks for the benefit of, of so many people. Uh, and for his efforts in terms of bringing this back to life for the eight weeks with the bell codes, the illuminations. Uh, retired bobbies who've helped us in another room, some are here, uh, who've, uh, who've continued to give up their time since starting retirement to make this work. Um, the many, many who've been guides throughout this period, uh, and many hours given up to, to be here. Uh, we've got heritage experts coming in now to pick up from where we're, we're leaving off. Uh, special uh, recognition has to be to Mr. Bennett, um, specifically for the warm welcome he's extended, firstly to us back at the beginning of the year, but continue to do that through all the volunteers and many, many of the 3,500 people who come here. So thank you very much, Mike. Really appreciate it. So, I'm not quite no. quite quite nice. <laughs> right. it's good when you have a script. Um, Today is a sad day um, because it's the last day that so many of us will come into the box as it is. Uh, but we do leave knowing together we have truly something remarkable. Thank you. <laughs> Premature heart stop. <laughs> If you've been on a tour midweek, uh, the likelihood is you would have seen Greg. Uh, Greg works at Chilton Railways, uh, and he's obviously seen many different types of tours, haven't you, Greg? Just explain the sort of diversity that we've seen, because uh, originally we said this box can be used for pretty much anything, can it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, certainly one of the um, the, the most um, joyous parts of doing these these visits is seeing um, quite how varied the the groups have been. Um, certainly from you know Cubs, Scouts, uh, Sea Cadets. And uh, even through uh, the public visits that we've had, uh, we've had art groups, uh, photography sessions, and it's been absolutely fascinating talking to uh, different people that have come from a railway background, but have known a lot of people here, uh, known a lot of people from the area, uh, but equally just people that uh, have come uh, to see the box and uh, to hear their, their thoughts and um, you know, express to them quite uh, what a way of life uh, the signal box was. It's been absolutely amazing, so it's been a really a fantastic time um, for these last few weeks, certainly. So obviously, if you've also been on a weekend or weekday tour, you might have seen this chap here, uh, who's looking rather dapper today. This is Mark Bennett, um, who has been sort of vital to the success of this from Network Rail. Um, Mark, just to remind me, obviously we've been working for months. Just to remind me of what we set out to achieve with these tours. So we effectively set out to allow members of the public 
to come in and see this wonderful signal box as part of Network Rail's kind of overall corporate social responsibility. There's a big piece here about kind of respecting the cultural heritage of what we've got as the, the UK's rail operator, and this is this has just been immense. When we set out, we set out to give people free and open access to come and see this, and we wanted to use that opportunity to talk about railway safety, railway history, and to sort of introduce the public to an environment they never would come in. I never thought, this is the first time I've heard that number. Uh, I was thinking, you know, a couple of hundred. Uh, yeah, three and a half thousand people to see this because of what we've all done collectively has been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So I'll just repeat that number again, 3,508, statistic we must remember for a long, long time. Uh, so obviously this box has been open for 116 years, it's never shut in its entirety. Uh, it's always been manned, and one of those people who, a bit of an idol on the railway, very admirable, almost like celebrity status, uh, is Martin Crane. So along with the likes of uh, the, the Bob Milsons of the world, uh, and all the other signalers that have worked here, he's worked here for the last 14 years. Now, Martin, this is almost like your second home, um, and obviously us coming into it as foreigners um, to run these tours, did we do it justice, and have you, have you enjoyed it? Oh yes, without a doubt. Um, the funny thing is, I shouldn't have been here. <laughs> um, you talk about it being my second home, for the last two years it virtually has been because of staff shortages, which was the reason I came here in the first place, because I was shift supervisor in the signal box at New Street. And my boss said to me one day, he said, I don't know how we're going to cover the boundary here, we've only got five seats, we're now in 12. So I knew the area roughly from when I'd been on the relief on the Leverton area back in the 70s. So I said, well, I don't mind going down on loan if you're that stuck. So I ended up in Banbury South. And after six months, they filled a few of the jobs. And I started enjoying myself. It was right back to my roots. So when they said you can go back to New Street, I would stay. And I said to my boss at New Street, what would you say if I said I wanted to stay at Banbury? Oh, please yourself. So I did. <laughs> and there was a bit of a move around there because. The lad that was here on my shift at Boundary South, I'd worked with at Saltley and New Street, and then he'd moved on and, and somehow managed to fill redundancy out of the railway, and then come back and kept the money. <laughs> <laughs> and he went to Fenny Compton, and then he came here. So on our shift, it was like New Street back here because it was about the two of us. They paid off some of the people who were long term sick, and then. Dave here went on one of the relief agencies, so I came here, and that was it. 14 years later. And when I came here, I have to say, it was a dump. <laughs> what you see here now, yeah, nothing compared to what it was like when I came. And the South wasn't very good, I was not very nervous. They were both scruffy holes. They'd been neglected for years. I always got the feeling that Banbury being at the far end of the zone, we were out of sight, out of mind. So I badgered the manager, and eventually we got them to come and do the refurb on the two boxes. Um, it was an interview for the year. It was a start. And it all went off from there. And they, they actually emulsioned the walls in here. Well, you can imagine emulsion with a cold stone, what it looked like. So one week on nights, I'd gone out and bought it in a cream paint, and I glossed the entire cream walls. And we just moved on from there. The only thing that was good in here when I moved in was the leaves were clean. And I think Dave Vincent had done that yeah. when he'd been there covering boxes. So we just built on that. Yeah. And we've had a good team here who have all kept the box clean. Um, I've done things like we sealed the liner, which was non slip, because it held all the dirt. So we sealed it so we could polish it. And it's all added to the. And then we get the popper refurb because we've added them again because what was done the first time. Outside, all came off after 12 months. It was a shocking job. They did it with floodlights on a Saturday night. So they came back and they did it again and they did a proper job this time. And as you can see outside, the only trouble with outside is that the dark, light and dark stone, the dark stone's faded so it matches the light stone. <laughs> it's due for a repaint. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, there's a nod there to Dave Vincent who can't be with us tonight because uh, he's been called out. Um, joys of being a mobile operations manager. Um, so that sort of brings Project Crossover to a close. Um, Project Crossover being the joint collaboration between Network Rail 
uh, Chilton Railways and the Banbury community. I think you're about to ask us for something, aren't you? Yeah, I think I actually wouldn't mind the keys back. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately we um, we have the access. We've got deep pockets, unfortunately, but not deep enough to fund the signal box. So there it is. Fantastic key back. Thank you, number two. Gentlemen. Um, so obviously we now hand over to the salvage apparatus operation, uh, which Rod, Steve, and many other people here are involved in. Um, and there's only real one way to close this sort of project out. Uh, and there's only one man that can really do the honours for it, isn't there? You know, in all my years on the railway, I have only ever done this twice. Because all the boxes I've worked could switch out. So the switching out procedure is different to closing. So 557 was the switching out procedure to get line clearance as well. And then you'd use that, which most of probably won't tell them. But to do it properly. Over. All right. Yeah, cheers. Three. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you.